This is take two. How's it going, guys? So this is my 2002 Mazda Miata. It's an NB, as you can see. So this is the second generation. It doesn't have the pop-ups. So I've had this car for about six months. I think my six month anniversary or whatever of buying this car was yesterday or the day before. I don't know what day it is today. And so I just figured I'd tell you guys what it's been like owning this car for six months. There's a million reviews of this car. This is such a popular car that, I mean, the Miata is like what, like the number one selling sports car of all time or something like that. So this isn't gonna be like a complete review of the car. This is gonna be my experience buying it. Cause if you asked me a year ago, if I, own, if I was gonna own one of these right now, I would have said no way. There's, I mean, maybe, but I just, I didn't think I was gonna do it. And then I was like, you know what? Some events happened and I was like, screw it, let's do it. So. My car before this was a 2007 Camry Hybrid. I mean, it was a Toyota, right? It was really reliable, you'd think. Um, but the AC went out in that car. And when the AC went out, I was already looking at getting one of these. How many, and I talked to a few in person. Hi. Ah, uh, YouTube video. No, it's just a, like a car video. You wanna be in it? <laughs> sure, come, come stand by the car. <laughs> I don't care, you guys. <laughs> What are you guys' names? I'm Madison. Hi. I'm, I'm Kayla. Nice to meet you. What is, it? is this for like a commercial? No, I, I just make YouTube videos. It's a very nice car. Thank you. Yeah, I've owned it for like six months. So that was like my six month video with the car. Yeah. Where, what are you guys up to? Uh, oh, okay. Fun. Stay drinking. Of it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I should get you guys a snap. Awesome. Cool. Cool. I'll, I'll subscribe. Do you want to add me? We're going to keep going. So. If you yeah, end up going out, okay. we're going to keep drinking and be more drunk. So, <laughs> okay. take your video, car video. <laughs> okay, all right, and cool. We'll see you out. Have a good evening. Okay, now I have to keep going. Shoot, where was I? Wait, let me make sure I'm still rolling. We are still rolling, okay. I think at this point we've established, right? Had this car for six months. My previous car was a 2007 Toyota Camry. The AC went out, it was going to be like two grand to fix that. So the car was only worth like five or six grand if it was in good condition, like if the AC was working. So I was like, mm, do I really want to put two grand into a car that I like? It's a good car, but like I could, I could sell it and get one of these. So I thought about it for a while and I was like, you know what? Screw it. So I sold, I listed the uh, Camry on Facebook Marketplace uh, for four grand or five grand. I ended up selling it for four grand to somebody. I told them about the issue. I told them, look, this is what's wrong with it. It was a problem with the evaporator core. Uh, in the AC under the dash it was a big job to fix. I told them what it was. I told them how much I'd been quoted to fix it and everything. They understood the problem and everything. And so, you know, they, they understood the problem and they bought the car for four grand. Then I found this thing actually the day before, I think right before I sold the car, the Camry, I found this. Um, and it was in Gardnerville, Nevada, which is a couple hours from where I live. I live in Sacramento. Um, and so I saw the car and these things sell quick, right? Like if you find one of these, on uh, Facebook Marketplace, something like this. I've been looking for like months, so I knew what I was looking for. And I would find one and it would sell like immediately. And that was because there just seems to be a high demand for these. I think they're really popular, especially in the summertime. I was looking in the summertime. Um, and so I, need, I knew I needed the money to buy one. I need to have, I needed to have the money so that when I found one, I could just go buy it. Uh, and I didn't have to like, you know, it's sort of like a chicken and egg problem. So I got, I sold my old, other car. And then we went and got this one uh, in Nevada. Now, what happened was I was actually getting out of the shower and I checked Facebook Marketplace uh, and I saw this and I was like, bro, dude. <laughs> so it was like a weekday, like 9 a.m. And I went downstairs, my mom was working from home because of COVID and I was like, mom, like, look at this. And she was, she's in the car. So she wanted me to get the car. So I was like, look, we found the car. I found an awesome one, a clean one in Nevada. It's kind of far away. Can we go look at it, please? Um, and so she went to talk to her boss and she saw if she could get the day off work and she could get the day off work. So I was so, thank you mom, if you're watching this for uh, going and picking this up with me. Um, so we got to Nevada and we looked at the car. I didn't know how to drive stick. Well, okay, that's a lie. I kind of knew how to drive stick. I had driven stick for like 45 minutes uh, ever in my friend's Civic. So I knew how to drive stick, but not really. But I checked out the car. Everything looked really good on it. And then I took it for a test drive. <laughs> and uh, that was a little dicey, right? Because I didn't have very much experience. I stalled it a bunch of times, but the dude, it was an older guy who, uh, it was actually his wife's car, who uh, was, was riding with me. Was, you know, like he was, he was nice and he was trying to give me tips and stuff. And so I took it for a test drive and then I bought it. Uh, the car was listed for $4,900. 
he came down to $4,500, so we agreed on $4,500, and then we took it back to Sacramento. Now, bringing it back to Sacramento was kind of a, a, a process. Um, not really a process, but just I didn't know how to drive stick, so I actually drove my mom's Honda Accord home, and then she and my sister drove this home because she had had stick cars in the past. She'd driven stick for like 10 years or something like that, so she, you know, she was fine. She hopped right in this, and in like you know, five minutes, she felt how the clutch felt, and she was fine. So we drove the whole way home, um, and this is kind of where it got sort of nerve-wracking. We were like 20 minutes from home, and we were at this major intersection around rush hour, and we were trying to go left. You know, it was like a protected left turn uh, uphill, and she was letting out the she was letting out the clutch and giving it gas, and the car would die. And there's like a lot of cars behind us and stuff at this point. So we're like, oh shit. So she calls me, right? And she goes, Gavin, like I'm stuck at this light with cars behind me on a hill. Like, what am I gonna do? So she kept trying to start the car, and what it would do is it would idle at like 1,200 RPM or something like that. It would idle really high, and so she'd keep restarting it and trying to go and trying to go. Finally, I parked and I literally ran out, like carefully, make sure I didn't get hit by a car, ran out to her, I was like, what's going on? We tried to figure it out. It, it started working and she drove the whole west, rest of the way home, uh, cognizant of that issue, making sure that like it didn't do it again. The weird thing is that hasn't happened except one other time since I've gotten it. So it's kind of weird. Okay, so this is the high idle that it does. I'm sitting here, AC off, everything is out of gear, it's clutches out and it's idling at 2200. It's 105 degrees outside right now. So that could be part of it, but you can hear it idling really high. I don't know why it's doing this, so I'm gonna let it cool down for a little while. Weird. Anyway, so we got home to Sacramento and now I have a car that's registered in Nevada, <laughs> in Sacramento with like that's kind of i'd never you know registered a car in sacramento before let alone a car from out of state in sacramento i'll wait for this car to go by this is an active parking garage there as you can see there are people so we got to come to sacramento and i ended up spending a lot of money it's a whole process i'm not going to go through the whole process of what it takes to register a car in california that you bought out of state I had to pay like some taxes and registration fees and all that kind of crap. It ended up being like six or seven hundred dollars, and then I had to get tires because the tires I had were eight years old. Eight years old. Anyway, if you're gonna buy one, especially from out of state, uh, just know that it's gonna cost some money. Like, I'd say budget like eight hundred bucks, probably less than that, but maybe eight hundred bucks to to get it registered in California. Like I previously mentioned, when I bought this car. I had very little stick experience. Like I knew the concept, I knew how to do it in theory, and I had driven for like 30 to 45 minutes in my friend's Civic, but now I had one, so I had to learn it, right? This was my car. I, had to, I didn't have any other way to get around, really, if I didn't learn stick. That was a little scary, but honestly, I was so excited. Like That was why I wanted this car, that it didn't really bother me at all. Um, and it took me probably a week of driving to be able to confidently go anywhere, uh, and then after two weeks, I would say I wasn't even ever stalling it anymore. I, I haven't stalled it in a while. Um, and anybody who drives stick, you know, just kind of knows. There's a learning curve. It's not too bad. And then once you get there, uh, you're fine. You kind of don't even think about it. Uh, certain things like, like you know, heel-toe shifting and, and rev matching and stuff like that, um, it took me a little bit longer, and I'm still not 100% on that kind of stuff. Some of that is like driving skill that just takes like years to master. So I'm not there on all that yet. But um, I would say the driving stick aspect of it isn't something to worry about too much because I feel like you'll pick it up pretty quick and this is an easy car to learn in. It's getting darker, I gotta check my exposure. Mm, we're gonna start bumping up. So how's the driving experience? I mean, it's a Miata. If you've seen any other content about Miatas, it's great, it's nice. Um, I haven't dr driven a lot of like, you know, sports cars, if you wanna call this that. Some people say it's not a sports car because there's no enough horsepower or whatever, but. I'd say it is. It handles great, it handles amazing. Compared to the Camry I got, uh, you know, it's awesome. Uh, it's kind of fun to take people who only drive like SUVs and, you know, give them a ride. Cause you can like, f like go through a corner and carry some speed and they go into the corner, they're like, we're gonna roll, we're gonna roll. Uh, like, you know, if they were in their car, they'd really have some body roll. But in this car, even stock, you know, it's just, it's a low, you know, lightweight car. Uh, the convertible is awesome if, you're into that sort of thing. Uh, I will say that in the summer it can be hot 
And I don't live where it gets very cold, so I haven't really ever been cold in the car. But definitely um, on road trips, you know, I put the top up because I've actually gotten sunburnt riding in this car before. Uh, let's talk a little bit about practicality. Space, you know, seating, um, stuff like that, freeway mileage um, are some things I want to cover. Trunk space, <laughs> one thing I learned is that you can't put a grocery bag vertically in the trunk, right? You have to lay them all. A grocery bag will not fit in here vertically. I have to lay all my groceries sideways. It's fine though. I've even gone uh, grocery shopping for my roommate and I, and we both got a decent amount of stuff. It all fit in the back and then he kind of held some of it. And you even have this space right behind the, um, right behind the seats when the top is down or when the top is up, you have space there too to put stuff. So space is fine for just one person or even two people going grocery shopping. Freeway miles, let's talk about that too because that's another thing. Um, above like 40 to 50, uh, above like 50 miles an hour when noise starts to become a thing. Bro, look at this. God damn. Wait for it. Wow. With the top up or the top down. Um, rolling the windows up with the top down helps a lot, but wind noise is still a thing. Um, and it can actually get pretty loud. Like sometimes I wear earplugs or I have noise canceling AirPods Pro, you know, they have the noise cancellation on them that I'll run. I don't know if that's legal, but I don't know, it's kind of nice to have. Uh, so wind noise is a thing. And then this is a five speed. So in fifth gear, 70 miles an hour is like 4,000 RPM. So your revs are up, you got wind noise, you know, that, that's sort of the downside of, of this on the freeway. So if you want like a touring car, if you want like a GT car, if you want something that you're gonna like, you know, crank out freeway miles, I don't know if I'd recommend this. I drive two hours uh, to and from like, you know, I go to school in Northern California and then I live in Sacramento. So I, I make that drive sometimes. It's fine. I wouldn't want to do it every day or something like that, you know, but it's not a big deal for a couple hours. Like I said, reliability. Uh, I did have those issues literally the bringing it home with the revs climbing. Um, I don't know if that has to do with like the idle air control valve. I was doing some research. It could be like an intake leak or something, but it's so weird because it only happens sometimes. Like it's only happened like twice and it only happens when it's been really hot. So I don't quite know what that is. Other than that, it's been very reliable. Um, I haven't ever been stranded anywhere. Uh, I haven't ever, you know, had anything really seriously break. Um, I don't really have a lot to say about that other than, I mean, then again, I've only had the car for six months. I haven't had it for that long, but um, reliability has been good so far. Upgrades, am I gonna upgrade this thing? I know this is like such, like there's so many people that modify this car. Pretty much everybody modifies this car. Um, for me, that's money. I'm a college student. I don't really have money to do that right now. I do, but then I, w I don't know if it'd be like a good financial decision <laughs> to do that right now. Um, so if I do anything, I might do coilovers and sway bars, because uh, that's like the greatest, and tires. I have new tires on here right now, uh, but they're not like, they're like economy, like high tread wear, they'll last a long time kind of tire. It's not like a super grippy, you know, track day tire. Um, so I would say tires, suspension, you know, coilovers and uh, sway bars would probably be what I would do. Um, but right now I'm happy with the car how it is. The stock ride height's a little high, you know, I'm not, I'm not that low, but it's kind of nice for practicality. I mean, sometimes if I drive down a street with a bunch of potholes or over a speed bump, I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, so, you know, I, I have plenty of time to, to work with this car if I want to do modifications to it, but I like it stock. The other thing about keeping it stock is the resale value. I keep the resale value. If I start doing a bunch of crap to it, the resale value starts to take a hit. So, will I drive this car forever? No, probably not. <laughs> Just because size. I mean, I could see this being my second car if I get another car someday, um, but I will, not, I will not drive it forever. Obviously, like, I can't, if I ever have kids, you know, I'm only 21, so that's a long ways. Um, and there are lots of other cars that I also want to try. Like, my dream car is a 911. I would love a 911 one day. Uh, but that's just, you know, it's not going to happen until after college and I have more money. Um, but this is a really fun, it's, a, it's an awesome first car. Like if you want to learn stick, you want to learn driving dynamics, you want to learn stuff like that, that is, this is a great platform for that. And I feel like, like that's, that's sort of how I see this car is as a really good starting point for me to learn. And I, I hear people say like people that, you know, drive really expensive cars, they still come back to these and love these. So I like it, but I probably won't keep it forever cool thing is I'll probably get my money out of it when I do go to sell it. 
All right, so I have no idea how long this video is, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, it's not the most crazy in-depth video. It's just my experience with this car. Um, there are a million other people that do like crazy in-depth videos on how to modify these. I got the Money Pit shirt. I've been watching Money Pit from Donut Media. I don't know if you guys watch that. Uh, like, you know, every week since, since even before I got this, I think I've seen every episode of that show. Uh, so that was a huge influence. Zach Job, you're awesome. Uh, that was a huge influence in me buying this car. Uh, so yeah, I've enjoyed it. It was definitely an awesome purchase. Uh, you know, sometimes it has its drawbacks. I can't carry lots of other people. Uh, you know, it's not the, the quietest on the freeway, things like that. But overall, the sacrifices I say are worth the, like, you know, what you get. You know, if it's a small car, but you get the light, you know, great handling. So overall, I'm really happy with this car and I can definitely see myself, you know, next six months, I can't wait for it. It's gonna start getting warmer uh, and, it's just gonna be a blast. COVID might end and I'll be able to, you know, meet up with other people more and stuff. Like, it's awesome. I really enjoyed the car. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, peace out. And we got a car leaving, car leaving, car coming. Alrighty. Sick. That was a long ass clip, bro. It's a 20 minute 4K.